<clears throat> hey guys. How's everybody's day? It's hotter than hell outside. I personally am a summer girl. I love summertime, but this kind of heat is not my vibe. So I uh, I'm just chilling here. The AC doesn't quite get this room the way that it does the uh, the rest of the building, but I can't complain. There was a time when I had um, no AC in my apartment or my car, and it was one of the hotter summers like three or four years ago. So I'm just grateful <laughs> anytime I have some respite from the heat. I feel like I'm gonna wait maybe another two minutes um, before I start the actual actual tour. Um, let me just take the music down a notch. But um, in the meantime, I thought I would introduce myself and invite you to participate um, the entire time. I feel like I'm happy to answer questions at the end if something comes up, but if you have one during this, um, I'm happy to have this more as a conversation. So don't be shy. Um, my name's Oksana Berta, and I am in my studio currently. I rent with Akin Collective, um, and I'm in their space that is in Etobicoke. It's actually super nice. It's, uh, it's on the lake shore. And um, it's really close to the lake. I don't know if you can quite see it from here, but it's just right over that tree line. So it, you can take nice little breaks and walk down to the water, um, especially on uh, nice days like today. Um, I started renting with the kin pretty recently. Um, I got here, or I officially started renting in January, but I sort of situated and moved all my stuff here um, by the end of January, early February. And um, yeah, it was an interesting process because I found like it gave me a really, um, a really legitimate pause. And because I had to move, I, I used to, um, do everything out of my apartment. So because I had to move everything that was art related or related to my practice here, I had a chance really to go through all of my work, which I hadn't really like done um, an audit um, of absolutely everything, probably ever. So that was really interesting. And then to kind of set up in a new space and figure out how it will function and um, yeah, make it work was just like a really interesting process. I feel like it helped me. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this. Maybe the quarantine is putting you in this position and I definitely relate, but it's really tough to, like there comes a certain point when working from home is just like limiting in a way that reflects in not just, you know, the scale of your work, but you just can't develop ideas in the same way. Um, I don't know, maybe some people don't need that separation, but I found that I did. And it's been a little bit healthier for me too because um, I just had to get more structured about when I come in here and I like dilly-dally way less, you know, because there's not like a TV and a couch there for me at any point, so I can just lay down and relax or, or whatever. Um, so I come in here a little bit more... Um, more assertive with like more more goals more things to do hi everybody i feel like i'm seeing some waves let me see if there's any questions okay no um yeah so since february since um oh and that's like not really the only reason to like i definitely felt limited by 
my space at home um, and less free, you know, even even just like with with the space that I had, I would always worry about like, oh, shit, I got paint on the floor. So I'd instantly clean that up and interrupt myself instead of kind of moving on with what I was doing. So my priority was like still the home and not the practice. Um, yeah. And then the other thing was 2019 was the um, the second full year of my having taken taken art full time as um, as a business and I feel like the first year 2018 was different because I had all of this pent-up energy from having having have having had to balance my full-time job with my art practice so when I finally got the time to do it it took about a year for me to really kind of burn through that like pent-up energy that I had um and then 2019 was just like really lonely to be honest with you I felt super lonely I was really isolated um it's really hard especially like in the winter months when you just don't have anywhere to go really um in a in a way it's like such a blessing because you're like oh my god I can spend the entire day here and just paint or do whatever but for some reason it really does um doesn't always work that way for some reason it's really nice to have somewhere to go anyways um yeah and so I reached out to a bunch of akin locations um because I had gone to I think maybe a gallery crawl and maybe another event of theirs maybe I think they hosted like a grant talk with um an officer from I th want to say the Ontario branch anyways and I was just like okay I want to see you know what these guys are all about um and I had toured two other locations and they just didn't really have the um they didn't have a lot of vacancy so I, I didn't have a lot of choice for um in those spaces and then I came here and this is quite new I think it's not even a year old if I remember correctly I feel like they started in um September maybe of last year um, so it was just kind of like a new frontier and there was a lot of space and a lot of choice and I like the location like I, I uh, lived in the beaches right before the quarantine so I just liked that I'm by the water again for most of my day um, yeah and it's been really nice and I feel like even with um, with the quarantine because my my sort of resolution for 2020 was to work on the community aspect kind of to make sure I wasn't feeling the same way that I was feeling last year um, so the ways that I was doing that was well number one I um, got a space here so I could be part of a like a community um, and leave the house um, more often or every day and then the second thing was I was um, going to at least one opening a week. And I feel grateful for that now because I really feel like I just went so hard January, February, March that I don't really feel like I have any regrets, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, so it's been, it's been really nice. And uh, I cut myself off, but what I was saying is that even with the quarantine and not really be, being able to socialize or like even really you know, hang out with anybody here, I still feel, um, I still feel that connection to community, even through the occasional email and whatever. Um, yeah, so it's been really nice. I don't know if anybody's kind of in that place of trying to figure out their next step and you're in a position where you can take your studio out of your home. It's been a really um, good experience for me personally. Um, yeah, so maybe I should tell you about my work and then and then I'll take you around um, the space and show you what it's all about so I primarily um, I'm an abstract artist and I primarily paint um, for a long time I did work on paper and I really love paper um, and then last year a big focus of mine was canvas and I was trying to express certain ideas on paper that it just wasn't strong enough to handle so I started working with Canvas and all of last year, it was just depressing to think about it back because my perspective was so, um, not necessarily negative, but like I just couldn't see the light. Um, 
so I, I kind of felt like I wasted a whole year at first because I really couldn't figure out what I was doing on canvas and I kind of locked into a direction a little bit too early and so I would try to edit work or decide if it was you know saying what I wanted it to say but what I realize now is that I was kind of in the middle of my process um, anyway so I work with um, color um, I treat color as like a character in my work um, my work is really sort of, my work is informed a lot about, um, by narratives. I have a background in literature and um, a master's in writing. So I really consider that a lot. I love movies. I love the way that um, collections of work can speak to each other within the collection. So that's like really kind of like a quick summary of what I do. And I'm super inspired by um, the outdoors and I guess more specifically personal experiences with the outdoors. Um, I've always found that the biggest sort of transitional moments of my life have come from some kind of uh, powerful experience that I would have um, in the outdoors. Um, I guess like to ground it, an example I have is right after I finished my master's and I came back to the city, which um, I think was eight or seven years ago. Um, I went to Spain and I did the El Camino hike. Half of it I did with a friend and then she left me. So this, the second half I did by myself. And then I did a little, um, I did some trips sort of around Spain, but basically it's a through hike. So you're on your feet for, um, I was, I did it for 25 days is when I got to my end point um, or to the final point of the, of the uh, hike. And it's like one of the biggest resets that I can think of um, in my life. And yeah, and I, I feel like just in general, sort of like having those solo moments um, when you're really not influenced by anything. Like I consume a lot of stuff, music, podcasts, films. Um, I breed a lot. So I don't know, to be sort of like, cleansed out of anything and have time with your thoughts I think is really powerful and I suppose my work is about processing those things so I use lots of color I use um, organic forms um, I like lots of different mediums so I'm not really married to any one thing I actually am interested in how they um, how they can speak to each other the tension that they can create um, I did a really cool project last year um, for a book and it was um, for this woman who had written a book um, and she, it's a book of poetry and the way that she wrote it was she was inspired by um, this woman who had been an early settler um, from England and so there's all these diaries and little drawings and maps that she had. Um, anyways, and so the book of poetry is sort of a conversation between these two women. And then I was asked to be kind of like a third voice um, and bring my visual language to this book. So we did the first sort of batch of um, paintings on paper that, you know, I just picked the color story based on what I read. They gave me a section to kind of focus on. I read and I interpreted it. Um, and then they came back to me a little bit later because the production of this poetry book was paused. So they had time to think about it. And then they sort of sent me to places in, in the city to forage for materials to create inks out of and then out of those inks I made paintings for this book um yeah and so that that's like that project was probably one of the only ones oh but then I ended up making charcoal um at the very end because we wanted a drawing like a darker element to it but what I meant to say is that that's like one of the only projects that I can think of that has like a really isolated medium. I really like the way that mediums can speak to each other and enhance each other. That's like a really big um, part of my practice. So I'll mix acrylics um, with watercolor, um, with inks with both of them as well. I like to um, have an opposition between dry and wet mediums too. Um, yeah, anyways, that more or less explains it, but you can obviously see of my more of my work and then I'll show you some stuff um, here today. So let me just do a little check-in, no questions. Um, 
So I'm gonna take you around and show you some stuff. Um, so this building that we're in, I just got water up my nose. This building that we're in, I believe is an old office building. I mean, it is, all the evidence is there. And we're on the third floor. I showed you the, the window earlier. It's, I'm actually like more of a ground person. Like I've always lived in a house or like on an apartment that has been ground floor, but I'm enjoying this change of being a little bit higher in the air. And this window is like really wonderful. I'm lucky because I'm south facing, but I don't get the Eastern sun, which is really intense on this curve of the lakeshore. So it's not, it gets natural light, but it's not crazy. Um, and then I just always have this big chunk of sky. Um, it's so nice to watch the snow fall. It's just, it's like a really good space. When I walked in here, when Aaron, the manager was giving me a tour, I walked in and I just instantly waltz in and I was like, oh my God, this is my space. Um, so yeah, so when you come in, this is the front of my studio. I have left this sort of partition here, um, this thing, and it kind of designates my creative space and sort of my storage space slash, um, I mean, yeah, it's mostly storage. Um, so here I kind of MacGyvered this um, storage shelf. So up top is um fresh paper and then also just finished works um that i like to have flat um there's some rolled canvas in the back as well i'm somebody who needs quite a bit of order so that i can work because i find if i don't i'm um super distracted so the the neater that i can keep the space the more productive i find that i am um so yeah so that's paper then I have some canvas stuff here um, some stretchers that will hopefully be used soon and then this is my little like utility closet if you will um, up here is shipping stuff and some orders that will go um, for pickup soon um, over here is sort of like a display shelf um, I try to make this space as functional as possible and so I really do believe that creating content is a way to kind of democratize art because not a lot of people, I mean, especially now with the quarantine, it's like nobody's going to galleries, nobody's going to, you know, cool curated coffee shops or whatever, so I really think that presenting, um, good interesting content is like a way to let everybody see um, art artwork um, so anyways so this is like a little display I guess like it's sometimes it's storage too but a little display shelf um, so up there I have some finished ceramics um, which is new for me actually this this year is the first time that I started playing with ceramics and I'm gonna show you guys later a collection I'm working on right now but honestly it would never have happened if I didn't join with a kin or if I didn't leave my apartment um, to like for a studio because you do need space you do need it's messy you know like as much as you can control it it is really messy and um, I met the manager of this space when I toured it her name is Erin um, she's an, a really incredible artist and she does really cool ceramics and so I saw to um, I saw her work at this exhibition that they put together um, in January and I was just I was stunned I was completely floored I had such a one-dimensional idea of what ceramics are and her work and a couple of other people that just serendipitously you know how that happens I ran into and I saw what they did. I was like, holy shit, ceramics are amazing. And you do so much with them and they're everywhere. Like there's a huge studio on the first, on the ground floor of this building that's rented by this ceramicist. And the pri like the primary thing that she does are tiles. And I'm so dumb. Like I just never realized that, I don't know. I, I guess I just figured maybe they, they're, they're made in factories or something. I just didn't even think that they could be so beautiful and handmade and loved and like there's so much artistry in them it just blew my mind um and i think with 2d art there is a limitation because it always has to be hung up 
um, more often than not on a wall. And with ceramics, there's just so much space to interpret it and to um, build out of it. Yeah, and so the Erin, is she hand builds, and that was another thing. I was like, what? You can do this stuff without a wheel? Like, I just had no idea. I was so blind to it. So it just blew my mind, and so I've been playing with it ever since. So those are some vases from my first collections that are left over. Um, those cubes are my new project that I'm actually really stoked about. They're just these ceramic cubes. These ones aren't fired yet. Um, but I'm really excited about them. The other thing that ceramics is helping me do is actually like, I've really wanted to expand, and this will happen at some point, I've wanted to expand into um, installation art. And ceramics has allowed me to start thinking that way, the way I, I couldn't, like there's no way for me to access it before. Um, now I just have ideas constantly pouring in my mind. Like one thing with this cube that I was thinking about is I want to apply, God willing, that, you know, we can snap back to something more um, normal in terms of public life. But I really want to do a an installation, a, um, what is it called? The winter installation in the beaches? Anyway, so I, I was just like doing these little models. So that's like a beach chair. And my imagining it kind of in this thing. Um, and it would be kind of about positive and negative space. And then you could sort of have a look at what's going on from here. But then the whole point is to be able to kind of, you know, see, see things in a different way, in ways that your eye can't access. I haven't thought it all the way through, but that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, that's why I love ceramics here. Some things that didn't work out, but that have taught me lessons or that are making my brain kind of think in different ways too. This was like a vase that I had done and it broke off before I fixed it, but then in the kiln, it broke off again and made itself a leg. And I was like, oh my God, okay. So saving that for a bit. Um, these are sculptures. This one didn't work out. So I'm gonna make a stand for it and keep it for myself. But this, these are like these sculptures that I was working on right when quarantine hit, um, which is interesting because I was just like, I was thinking to myself, would I have, would I have tried that had I not been completely taken out of my routine? Will those cubes be bisque, a bisque finish? Uh, they're gonna be bisqued, and then I'm gonna glaze them. And I'm working right now. I don't think the way in my imagination they're gonna be. Um, no, like no underglaze, no color, but I think I want to play with matte and um, shiny glaze with them. Um, I want them to be really clean. When I show you, when I get to the end of the room, I'll show you the uh, collection that I'm releasing in June and you'll kind of get the, um, I think you'll get like where I'm going with this, with these, because, okay, so with ceramics, what I'm but initially I was thinking like, oh, it'd be great to have these objects that are one of a kind, you know, same as the art, like all originals that people can have that don't have, you know, a huge mansion with a 900 square foot living room to put up a huge painting, you know, like what if you just have a shelf and you want to create a shelfscape, but you want that same feeling in them. So I was thinking like, that would be great. I could paint on um, ceramics and then, yeah. And then just having my mind open to, what you can actually do with them help me to start building them. And now that I've sort of done the, the my first collection of vases that I painted, now I'm really thinking like, okay, how might my shapes that I draw, how can they live in 3D? And that's kind of where I'm at right now, what I'm exploring. Anyways, I'll get back to it. Um, where was I? So I'll show you some of the work that is parallel to this, that I'm working parallel to this. And so this is kind of circling back to what I was saying about canvas earlier on. So this is like one of the canvas pieces um, from last year that only after the move I figured out what they were doing and what they meant. So I curated a bunch of finals that are like this. 
um, I'll show you some more that I have here that are meant to be framed. You know? Um, and so basically what I'm doing is I'm staining the canvas um, over priming it and then painting over it because this is kind of what I meant when I said earlier that my work um, on paper just wasn't able to sustain some of these ideas I was having it. So because um, canvas is a fabric, it can just take a lot more paint, a lot more stain. So I'm really like building these colors over a long period of time. So those tests and this test that I just kind of have framed here um, were the finals from that. And then I had all this other stuff that just wasn't working in all scales, like in really large scales and really small scales. Um, and then closer to the end of last year, I was like, okay, I'm not getting anywhere with this. I have to, um, I got to abandon ship and, and like destroy it all so that it, it's like not bothering me anymore. Cause a lot of this like work that I was doing just wasn't really working or I was overworking it. So I took off a, I started taking off some of these paintings off their stretchers and I took off the first one. And this was like, it's like one of those moments when like none of your motor skills are really engaged. Like things are just happening from someplace and you don't really know why. So I took it off the stretcher and I laid it down. And I, like the, the next motion I was meant to do, like I had a garbage bag next to it, is just roll it up and toss it in there. And something kind of arrested me. Like the painting had this really clean edge around it. And it completely changed the way that it looked, the way that it felt once it had come off the stretcher. And in that moment, I was I was just thinking about like how it was never meant to be on the stretcher. It was supposed to be free. Um, and then I just started pulling it apart. So I started like literally deconstructing the canvas itself. And then what ended up was this painting here. So this one is finished I believe uh, I don't know I, I change my mind every day but right now it feels finished to me um, and I sort of have undone it where I thought it needed to be undone and framed it this is kind of how I envision them um, and there's some smalls that I did of that that I did that I tested this with for afterwards um, so like this is an example of one it looks so beautiful framed I wish I had one of them in a frame but um, I just sold a couple of pieces and had to use those up and then this is an ambitious one but this one I've undone as well um, so I don't know I've been thinking about what what the heck it wants to do for a while the trouble I'm having I guess is like with this sharper point right here I don't know if that's quite what I wanted to do so I don't know it just kind of clicks one day so one day I'll wake up and I'll just know that it's right but all of this is working for me there's like some freer pieces that I left up here um it's it's like I'm thinking maybe before I take them off I might take Polaroids so that I can remember the feeling of seeing it on a stretcher and how constrained it felt and then seeing it kind of freed up like this I mean I have pictures but still um yeah so this is what i'm working with what i'm working on parallelly to this um there's this was like a piece i was working on when the live started um this will be part of a collection called neutral ground that'll come later um yeah so it's like i don't know that's kind of my process i just sort of try to be as open as i can so that I can develop techniques that are really unique to my voice and speak to, I don't know, speak to, like I kind of think of it sometimes in terms of writing or even in terms of like filmmaking. It's like, you know, it could be a free form poem. It could be an iambic pentameter, you know, it can be all these different things. And what does that look like visually? And so far 2020 with all of its challenges has been the most um, open that I feel like I've been just I've, I've just been way more experimental and more free and not like oh I'm this kind of artist I should be doing this or I'm this kind of artist I should be doing that which is so annoying and I hate 
I hate that you can't just turn that off, but you can't. Um, so we just battle on. Um, yeah, so then this is some of my final ceramics that is, has sort of become a little collection that I'll be releasing in June. Um, and the way that I'm, or the way that I was thinking through this is, I kind of mentioned it with the cubes before, but I'm sort of working with these shapes that I have in my works, these organic shapes, and bringing them into 3D. Um, so, so they're sculptures like this, and then, we're okay. I knew, I knew I was gonna do that though. Um, so there's some sculptures. Um, there's some more kind of like straightforward. I don't know, actually, I don't know if that's straightforward, but you know what I'm trying to say? A little bit less um, complicated, maybe not to the eye, but definitely to build. Um, and this is just me kind of experimenting, right? And then there's sort of like more traditional things like this one little bowl that can be used you know, for like jewelry or your face masks, but it also has that vibe, that same soul of kind of um, sort of this like organic shaped kind of free um, feel that can fit into a home and adopt something about that home. I don't know, I'm still processing it in my own head, but I feel like that's what this sort of collection this is like a little setup here because I just filmed still life scenes with these, but this is, um, there's like something really blank canvasy about this collection that I really love and um, makes sense to me in terms of just it going on to live in other places. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I had anything else to say about that. Oh, I should show you what the reason I initially wanted to do a little thing with ceramics is I had this idea for these organic stands. Um, so in my practice, I do a lot of tests that might look like this. Oh, actually, I have a wall to show you. So I do a lot of test work um, in different sizes. So this is like a wall of my references currently. Um, shapes and kind of like color colors that I'm interested in right now. This one, to me, the other day, I was like, oh my god, I think it's a painting like this. So I might be experimenting with that soon. Um, and then I have kind of like these swatches that also I will do up of the colors that, I'm, that are on my mind that I'm thinking about interpreting. And then I have them kind of up on the wall and then I'll rearrange them or sort of like rethink them as I'm working through stuff. Um, here's another grouping here. This is actually like currently what I'm, what I'm doing. But yeah, so I do a lot of these tests. Um, if I'm working on paper, I'll do like four by six and six by nine tests. And then I opened it up um, two years ago and I started curating them so that people with a smaller budget could collect smaller work. Um, and then for display purposes too, because they're not that precious and I'm not super married to them being in a frame necessarily. I mean, they can be and they look really great in frames, but I had this idea of making like a stand, which I couldn't find anywhere. Um, there's like metal cubes. Um, I'm trying to think like Umbra has these like sort of cylinders that just weren't didn't feel right, so that's like really why I wanted to play with clay the first time. Um, and that's what they do, which, which was the genesis of this whole ceramics journey. Um, yeah, I don't know, what should I, what should I show you guys? Do you have any questions? Um, so currently I'm working on some more projects in ceramics, a little bit, stuff that's like a little bit more out there. Um, I'm unraveling some works, um, like this guy again, sort of stuff that I showed you. At some point too, I'll have to make a display frame for it so that I can, you know, have, figure out what its final, final look is supposed to be and frame it up. Um, so that will also be a project in itself. Over the next couple of days, because it's gonna be so hot and, and 
um, intense outside, what I'm thinking is that I might do some outdoor sessions. So today I just cleaned some of my um, paint Tupperware. So remember I said that I try to make this super functioning. So up here I have kind of like a little photo studio set up, but then down here it's like all the mess. So I use these guys to take to go with me. So I'll throw in paint in there um, and then take some canvas or some paper, whatever I'm working with, and I'll just find some quiet place outside um, and just work outdoors, which sometimes just ends up producing the best work because, I don't know, you just really, I don't, something about not being in your regular space just makes you be more in the moment and so you're less thinking like oh if I put this line down this painting will be ruined and I'll never sell it or nobody will ever like it you're just kind of doing things which I think is always like the place we're trying to reach um, but it's difficult and then by the window here I don't think I showed you this yet but this is like a little setup I have where I just draw and make ideas so here's a sketchbook so these are um that one piece of neutral ground that I showed you on the floor and this is just me trying to figure out how it might look. Um, here's just some like shape studies and color studies. I always feel like, or if people ever ask me for advice, it's just like sketchbook, sketchbooking is so important because it lets you clear the pipes and it might feel like a waste of time if you're trying to be really productive and have finished paintings but it can really like it can really bring you to a healthy place when you are ready to work and work maybe bigger work on works that are final if maybe you're working for a client or whatever um sketchbooking for a while just really does i don't know good work for for your mind um make helps you focus and i think like the, another point to being kind of free um, you know most of us or I guess I shouldn't say that but at least for my practice when I'm working in a sketchbook I'm not really thinking that that's going to go anywhere so I just don't have that pressure of um, that preciousness of like trying to make everything work really well and look really good I just kind of do um, I just kind of do my thing so yeah I don't know guys, I feel like I've just talked for a hundred years. Let me scroll through. I'm not seeing questions, but I can hang out for a little bit longer, I feel, and see if anybody has anything to say. Drink water today, don't forget that. It is hot as hell. <clears throat> so this is um, one of the pieces that I'm undoing for just to see, I mean, I don't know if it'll work out. That's another thing. Ceramics and unraveling paintings is so humbling because you really don't know if it worked out until the absolute last step and there are so many steps in between. Like this painting was so punishing to unravel, I can't even tell you. I think I watched like four seasons of Lost while I did it, um, which is long because if you remember those seasons are 24 episodes at the beginning. Um, how do you decide on a color palette? Um, it's like a little bit of, um, it's a little bit spontaneous and it's a little bit, um, intentional and, okay, let me be clearer than that. So I feel like with color, like I've always just been able to kind of, interpret my own mood through color if um, that makes sense to you so I don't know I it's almost like cinematic you know if the if the scene is like really blue toned or really like a little bit darker you can feel that it's melancholic and if it's sunnier and there's lots of bright colors you can feel a little bit more liveliness to it so I suppose like I just try to channel an atmosphere um, and it comes naturally like I hate saying this because we can't do this right now I mean although online you kind of can 
for me it doesn't it doesn't feel the same way but I just find even going to the art store and kind of like looking at what colors are available to you and then I'll sit down for hours and I'll just mix paints because um, I never use this isn't like a humble brag or anything like that but I just have like a compulsive um, a compulsive sort of like behavior of like always mixing paint together like I can't ever have separate um, like separate sections for my paint on any kind of palette that I ever use like things just always tend to be messy it's literally the same way that I eat like it'll just be I like a big plate of food and I like sauces and I like it all to go together and I feel like painting for me is the same way so like that wall for example that I showed you with like these sort of swatches none of it will look none of it will be dropped in directly you know those are kind of ingredients that I'm gonna kind of work with and part of it is intuition and then part of it is time. Um, I think like, f especially for abstract art, um, you're constantly building a language. You're constantly just trying to figure out how to communicate something. And color is such a powerful tool that if you are working in abstraction, spending as, as much time with it as possible is really healthy and helps you get like really strong at it. Um, and I, and like now too, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself super brand loyal, like through my practice, I've learned what specific colors I like from what specific brands and I know how they mix. So over time you almost develop like, it's like a muscle. You kind of just know that I need this kind of indigo, um, or you know that you need like this flesh pink and if you mix it with titanium buff it creates like this specific dusty sort of color that you're looking for. Um, I don't know, does that answer your question or uh, did I just confuse you more? <laughs> Let me know. Oh wait. Um, yeah, so like neutral ground. I'll show you some of the studies actually that I have for it was so these studies I did what is your favorite brand that you use for acrylic uh, what is your favorite sorry guys I'm reading more one thing at a time and I'm forgetting that I'm on live what is your favorite brand of acrylic that you use um I just mentioned it I'm not really brand loyal uh although I do find that uh obviously golden is really high quality it's good I like liquid paints they also have really great um, brushes um, I like try art is really good um, yeah I mean I'd love to I'd love to say that there's I, I do find it a limitation with Tron a little bit there's not a ton of um, there's not a ton of brands or like ways that you can explore and ordering stuff from other countries is like really pricey and let's be honest you know budget concerns are real for artists especially if you're like uh, experimenting a lot um, but those three or four I would say are reliable and probably my favorite and have some really great colors um, but I never I wouldn't like a full painting would never be done with just golden I um, I really find that the different brands have different things and then I'm, I don't only use acrylic either I use a lot of watercolor in my practice and inks both um, that are produced and then some that I've been started making myself because of this project I did last year um, yeah I'm seeing some things pop up. I'm a ceramic artist and do installations and sculptures. Love your, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, ceramics are awesome. Honestly, if anybody is listening to this and they were looking for a sign or they were like, ah, oh, should I do ceramics? Yeah, you should. It's so cool. And I also find like, as an, a complete novice, um, and I don't know, like I'm not trying to make a blanket statement because maybe your experience has been different, but I find the ceramics community really welcoming. Like. Whenever I need advice or I ask people questions, they're always happy to help me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Ceramics are cool. There's so many videos, too, that you can watch and learn technique techniques from. I really love um, tools. And I just got... Um, I ac actually, I went to PSH this morning to pick up an order that I fulfilled. And I got these wooden tools. 
I did basically everything with my hands with all those other um, collection or like the other pieces that I showed you, but I'm, I can't wait to use this. I'm freaking thrilled. Um, what are the challenges you face going full time as an artist and how to overcome that? And how do you network and find your buyers? Okay. That is a long question, I feel. Um, if you think of like more specific things, do do throw it into the chat and I'll, I'll I can get more specific. But um, I talked about this at the start, and I mean, if you're gonna go full time and you're gonna leave your full time job and you're gonna work from home, it's gonna be difficult. So for anybody thinking going that route, like I would just say be prepared it's it's lonesome um it's it's challenging because you don't have a lot of feedback when you need it i mean social media and stuff and friends obviously do help you but there is something to say about um other people not sharing the same stakes that you're sharing so they're you know your friends will be like yeah that looks great because you know maybe it does and maybe it's because they love you like they they're just not in it with you the same in the same way and that can be really difficult so really like trying to sharpen your own radar um time managing yourself and figuring out ways to feel good um because you know you can get into a pattern of self-flagellation and be really harsh on yourself um, but you have to remember that you're doing like, you're fulfilling, you know, up to 10 different roles full time every single day. That's really difficult. Um, and yeah, and trying to build a community is really important, which I think was a part of your question. Um, I don't know. I think like I, I was on a call with a friend the other day and he's a photographer and he, it wasn't the other day actually, it was a little while ago, but it's, this conversation has been on my mind because to me he comes off, or like I think of him as really confident, um, he's really smart, he's really good at everything that he does, he's one of those people and he sort of called me and he was like, you know, I, I feel like I backed away from the opportunity to share my work with people and to make money from it and like I don't know what to do and I was so taken aback by it I was like holy shit like we what the point of that example is that we all have a lot of the same insecurities and the more vulnerable you are and the more that you realize that and allow yourself to remember that without kind of um with a lot of allowance that you're human the easier it will be for you to connect with other people um so one of the things we talked about in this particular conversation was you know he was just talking about how at one point he was on Instagram and then he really couldn't handle it and I mean my advice to him and to everybody is to not treat it like something different from um, interacting with people in the real world you know so if you want to say hello or if you if you feel like something looks great or if you have um, you know like this sort of intuition that you want to meet somebody I think you just need to reach out I mean you have to expect expect and accept that these people may not feel the same way that you do and maybe they don't want to collaborate and you know whatever um, just like learn that that's something that you'll have to deal with move on and try again um, same as in real life so building a network um, yeah it just works it, it just it's gonna be a reflection of who you are and your journey you know like we're not all maybe natural conversationalists or like it's the first time I've ever done a live <laughs> like don't know what I'm saying half the time I'm hoping this makes sense but I just think like doing stuff and putting yourself out there and pushing yourself so that you can grow will just inevitably create natural connections lasting connections organic connections and when it doesn't like it just doesn't um i've definitely had experiences where i've like gotten to collaborate with somebody or like got a show and i was like oh my god this is it like this will be my person you know we're gonna be like leo and martin scorsese and it's like we're just not a match you know like maybe aesthetically in some ways we are a match but in every other way we're not really a match and you just have to 
be okay with it. It's fine. You know, there's so many people in the world and the internet allows us to connect globally. So your creative soulmate may be somewhere else, just like your buyers may be somewhere else, which is the last part of your question. Um, yeah, I mean, it's challenging, especially when you're starting out because I was actually thinking about this yesterday because I was reading this ebook on the art world. Um, and you know, I mean, I can't even remember what made me think this, but it's obvious to say that you have to be in it for the long haul. But the thing with that is it's, it has to do with like the way that your career will build. So when we're talking about buyers, right? Like your inventory after two years and after five years will speak to so many more people that it's just an investment. You know, it's an investment in yourself and relationships and it's an investment in um, finding as many avenues as you can to show your work and not feel like anything is, um, you know, above you or whatever. I mean, you do have to be selective, but let's say if you made a Saatchi account and you've been on there for six months posting sporadically and you're not getting a lot of um, sales or a lot of feedback, I think the like unhealthy instinct is to be like, oh, it's not working for me. And I think the healthy instinct is to be like, okay, well, wait, what am I not doing that I could be doing better? Um, and then, and then it happens, like things will click into place for you over time. But I think time is that really important thing to consider. Um, and then also to like have, have avenues of making money and supporting yourself financially that can relieve a little bit of that pressure from your artwork when you're starting out, because it is, it can be really difficult. Um, to have really consistent sales and also like the thing about being in it on your own which I'm gonna assume that you are and correct me if I'm wrong is that you're gonna make a lot of mistakes and you're gonna learn from them and some of them are gonna be financial mistakes so if you're able to have some um, some kind of freelance gig or something that you can rely on on the side when you're starting out so that you can absorb you know that a hundred bucks that you spent and you know on prints that you mismeasured or something like that um you know so that you you don't feel so defeated every time that you make a good sale you feel like more than 80 percent of it are gone or like this expense or that expense or you know this like shipping costs that you needed for I don't know, packing paper or something like that. Like there's a lot of little things that will come into play that you'll just be like, oh shit, like I wish I knew that. And you, there's no way to know it um, or there's no way to know everything. So yeah, so I don't know. Does that answer your question? I've tried to sort of break it up into those three pieces. Yeah. Finding your buyers is all about being out there and being really open. Um, and creating ways for people to be able to not only find you, but feel like they can uh, reach out to you. Um, that's a really big deal. Um, because some, I've, I've even been in that situation too, where I've sort of admired the work of somebody and there's no place for me to see what's available. Um, there's no way for me to reach out to them in a way that feels like um, I don't know, even half professional. Like, I I think DMs and stuff like that are great to connect with people, but I don't think it's a sustainable way of communicating because messages go through and they bounce down. And um, I can tell when somebody is like dealing with me in that way. Like, um, I don't know. I you, you're gonna start to notice these things as you grow because the way that you that you you as a business owner is also a service provider and your customer service is really important to that um because it it'll also be the thing that will get that person to recommend you to somebody else or not so yeah okay guys any more questions let's do one more if anybody has one more and then i'll uh i'll let you enjoy this day i feel like i've gone on way too long 
No problem, girlfriend. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Um, I hope you're all keeping well and safe and stay positive, stay creative, um, and let's take care of each other while we um, weather this storm. Enjoy the, enjoy the weather. Don't forget to drink water. And um, maybe we'll, we'll see each other at some point in this, in this world. <laughs> okay, bye.